Delaware. Viruses, distributed denial of service. Now, these terms for the weaponization of code are now well known, but governments and citizens around the world are still just beginning to understand the full impact of cyber warfare. Now, recently caught up with Miko Hipponen, the well known hacker hunter and cybersecurity expert with F Secure. Over 10 years ago, I had interviewed him here in Hong Kong about viral threats to our network PCs. A decade on, in this current era of mobile computing, social platforms, and the Internet of Things, we are now facing a host of new cyber concerns. We have various different kinds of attackers out there right now. It's not just teenage boys writing viruses for fun, like it used to be. Now we have organized crime, organized online cyber crime gangs, which make hundreds of millions with their attacks, with banking Trojans, ransom Trojans, but they're not the only group either. Then we have hacktivists, like, you know, the anonymous movement, who are not trying to make money with their attacks, who are trying to, you know, protest with their attacks. And then we have governments, including intelligence agencies, militaries, and so on. And now we also have to worry about extremists, because clearly they are also wanting to beef up beef up their cyber offensive capability. How capable are extremist groups when it comes to hacking? Do they have what's known as you know, credible offensive cyber capability? We don't yet have to worry about cyber terrorism, but clearly the situation isn't getting better. Clearly it's, it's getting worse. And for example, US military is taking this threat very seriously. We can see that from the fact that uh, last year they actually twice executed with drone strikes hackers uh, working for extremist organizations. We are now in the mobile computing age, right? Most of us are accessing the internet through apps, not necessarily going through websites. We're using our smartphones, we're using our tablet computers. Are they more secure than PCs? Smart devices like smartphones and smart tablets, they are actually more secure by default than our computers. Oh. So if you take your Windows or Mac OS X computer and compare the security level to an iPhone or even an Android device, they, they, these mobile devices are more secure because they are more restrictive. The most important difference is that you cannot program them directly. I'm a programmer. If, I, if you give me a computer, I can write a program to it and then give it to you and you can run it on your computer. Mm. With an iPhone, I can't do that. The only way I can do that is that I write a program, then I send it to Apple, to California. And if Apple approves the program, then I can run it on my own device and give it to you. But we still shouldn't be complacent. I mean, there are cyber vulnerabilities in the mobile computing world, right? Uh, uh, if you look at the apps, the popular apps that are out there, which ones are, are most vulnerable? The biggest problem in mobile space aren't actually security problems, they are privacy problems. The fact is that many, many of these free applications make money by tracking you and tracking what you do. Um, for example, getting your contact lists and tracking your physical location. And that's not really a security problem, that is a privacy problem. And, and that's really troubling because we carry these devices with us everywhere we go. We use it for everything we do. And it is sort of still a big mystery what this lack of privacy means to us because we are the first generation that really is living our lives in the online world. Yeah, absolutely. So what are your tips and what are your best practices? How do you keep your data secure? I mean, what kind of messaging apps do you use? What do you do? Encryption works. So everything you do, use encryption. That's easy to say and hard to do in practice. So for example, please send encrypted emails. Uh, actually, how? Well, how, how should I do it? It, 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 it it's kind of hard to, to bring to practical levels. But for example, on your mobile phone devices, I always use VPNs on my devices, which means everything I do online is encrypted on my phone, sent encrypted over a Starbucks Wi-Fi, which would otherwise be completely out in the you open. You use VPNs everywhere in the world? Everywhere I go, I always have a VPN enabled on my phones and on my tablets and on my computer.